The origin of theatre might be found in the ritual circle or rectangle, the orchestra or dancing place laid out at the foot of a hill. Here Dionysus was celebrated, the Greek god of fertility and wine, said to be born out of the thigh of shoes. The worship of Dionysus was ecstatic by nature. In the 6th century BC, the celebration became formalized and ritualized. Women were not allowed anymore to participate. Nearby the orchestra, a temple of Dionysus was built. And in the middle of the orchestra, a timile or altar was placed. And it is thought that the celebration started with the sacrificing of a goat, called tragos. A probably uniformly dressed chorus of up to 50 men sang, accompanied by perhaps more or less oriental sounding music, a so-called ditirambe, a hymn in honor of Dionysus. Symbolic gestures of the chorus dance seem to have been closely related to the words that were sung. Allegedly, the poet Arion was the first to transform the ditirambe into a literary composition. With Arion, the beauty of language entered the ritual celebration. In the late 500s BC, in Athens, a democratic discourse arose, striving to give all male inhabitants of middle and lower classes a voice in state affairs. In that period, a singer of the Tirambi, named Thespis, is credited with innovating a new way of performing the Dithyrambi, in which a solo actor impersonated the characters of the songs. He used masks to distinguish between different characters, he became the Ansara, or Hippocritos, by wearing a mask of, for instance, a god. He, as it were, stepped out his normal being, the Ekstase, and came in a state of divinity, the Enthustase. The actor spoke and acted as if he was divine, and interacted with the leader of the chorus and its members, who acted as narrators and commentators. This new style of performance, based on a written text and, not to forget, in the presence of an audience, may have marked the birth of theatre as we know it today. It is claimed that Thespis travelled about on a cart with plays. This could mean that he performed in several Greek towns. This itinerant theatre is kept up until long after the Middle Ages. In 534 BC, during an annual festival called the City of Dionysia, a competition for the best tragedy was instituted by the ruler of Athens at that time, Pisistratus, and Thespis won this first documented competition. Thespis' pupil, Frimichus, was credited with introducing into drama female characters, played by men wearing female masks. He also introduced contemporary subjects. He won the competition with the Phoenice, who celebrated the defeat of the Persian king Xerxes at the Sea Battle of Salamis. However, none of his works nor that of any other dramatist from the 6th century BC have survived. In the 5th century, the city Dionysia festival became very popular in Athens. Temporary wooden tiers of benches were built up on the side of the Acropolis. Note the rectangular shape of the orchestra. During the festival, a rectangular building called the Xkene, meaning tent or hut, was erected behind the orchestra, where the actor, who played several roles, could change his costume and mask. Perhaps the skerne itself served to represent the location of the place, usually set in front of a temple, palace or house. Typically, there were two or three doors in the skerne that led out onto the orchestra, 
and from which the actor probably could enter and exit. Only much later, in the 4th century BC, the scanner became a permanent stone structure. Of all the hundreds of tragedies known to be written in the 5th century, 32 tragedies of only three playwrights have survived. The first of these playwrights was Aeschylus. He diminished the importance of the chorus and reduced it to 12 men. He probably innovated a second actor, thus making dialogue between characters possible. Each of the two actors usually played more than one role, including female characters. They wore always painted masks made of perishable linen, cork or lightweight wood. In particular on vase paintings, these tragic masks and costumes are depicted, but in most cases these faces are from a period later than the 5th century. Aeschylus has written about 80 plays, only 7 have survived. Now we see a brief summary of a TV recording of his tragedy Agamemnon, in which the actors wear masks. Note that the performance is indoors. In Aeschylus times the actors played in the open air, with thousands of spectators. So in those days the delivery is probably more declamatory than realistic. The play starts with a prologue. This watchman is standing on the roof of the Skerne, representing the palace of Agamemnon. He is waiting for a signal, announcing the fall of Troy to the Greek armies. The torch blaze that means Troy's finally taken. Next comes the parados, or the entrance of the chorus, made up of old citizens, telling and singing the story of the Trojan War. His blood king, Agamemnon. The queen Clytemnestra appears, and the chorus hears from her that Troy has fallen. Clytemnestra, the Greek armies have taken the city of Priam. A herald appears and confirms the tidings. King Agamemnon, welcome him warmly. King Agamemnon enters in his chariot with Cassandra, a Trojan princess whom he has taken as his slave and concubine. First I greet Argos and the gods of this blood clan. Clytemnestra welcomes him, professing her love. I am not ashamed to confess in your presence my love for my man lord. Agamemnon acts coldly toward her. Your words, like my absence, lasted too long. And eventually he walks on a carpet of purple robes and he enters the palace. If it means so much. She tells the chorus that they will see their king dead. One strokes for the slave girl, butchered defenseless. The chorus fears grow, and they hear Agamemnon cry out in pain from inside the palace. Clytemnestra appears standing over the corpses of her husband and Cassandra. She declares that she has killed him to avenge Iphigenia, their daughter who was sacrificed so that the Greek fleet could sail to Troy. A rebel in glory! He's had his libation. Then the queen is joined by her lover Aegistos. They take over the government. A dose of the strong arm will soon get you docile. The chorus declares that Clytemnestra's son Orestes will return from exile to avenge his father. He'll kill this couple. You and I will rule this house 